the name of the show is The Way to Go. My name is Alan Bendich. I'm going to be your host. Tonight we have a very lovely guest. Her name is Stephanie Ellen Almeida. She's an actress and a singer, and she's sitting right here. Yeah. Welcome to the show, it's Stephanie. It's so amazing to be here. Oh, it's my pleasure. It is really wonderful in this studio. I have to thank JT. JT. Oh, he's mm. so wonderful. Thank you, JT. Um, he's been so amazing to work with since I've known him for the past couple of years. He's yeah. always hooked it up, so thanks, JT. Yeah, I really, I really like JT, and I'm happy that he's on the mend, yes. and I can't wait till he's get back. Get better. And, yeah, I want him to get better, and but he is getting better, so mm -hmm. that's good. He will. So, you're an actress. Yes. You're a singer, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's it. I mean, like, uh, there's other things, but is, what is, which do you like better, or is it the same thing? So, you know, mm -hmm. I, as an artist, as a fellow artist, you know when you jump into the arts, you kind of have to be well-rounded and jack-of-all-trades. Right. And when I was younger, um, I performed. I toured with Sweeney Todd, Light in wow. the Piazza. Yeah, so I was always an artistic person. I always wanted to perform. But I think like most, we kind of get stuck between what we want to do and what's going to bring us security in life. Right. And some of us are lucky enough to do what we love, you know. And in my early 20s, right when I was about to graduate college, I remember thinking like, you know, I wanted to perform, but I also want to have stability. And all my friends who had been actors are like, if you can find any other way to make money, you <laughs> right. know, right. do it. So I kind of told myself, okay, I'll try it. So I went into the product production side. I started working for NBC right out of college. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it was super that's fun. That's awesome. Um, I started out actually on the Jerry Springer show, which is like, if you can do that show, you can do anything. It was a crazy day every single day. But um, after about a year working kind of behind the scenes and even being in like a more secure position in the arts, right. I watched an entire show that hadn't done well its first season get laid off. And you see people who have been in the industry for years, uh -huh. you know, searching for their next contract, not knowing what to do. So at that moment, I kind of had this breakdown. It, it was either you are going to do something you don't like and try and find that stability or you're just going to let it all go and go for your dreams. Right. You know, no more being behind the camera. Let's get back in front of it and let's see what you can do. Um, so within... I think a week I had let my company know that I was going and I used all the company ink on the last day to make a giant vision board like the size of half a wall. It's huge. Wow. And within that week, I reevaluated my goals. I was like, OK, how, how am I going to make this happen? How am I going to become a star? You know, right. and I made this vision board that was full of crazy things like traveling the world and having your own talk show, things like that. And maybe within a month. Uh, I had done an audition that turned out to be, uh, turned out introducing me to someone who had asked me to come to this casting for a beauty pageant, which I had never done and I really wasn't interested in that. I was like, okay, you know, I'm trying to be an actor. I don't want to go that route. But I ended up competing and winning Miss Tourism USA. Um, about, what was that like? I yeah. mean, when they said, <sighs> Stephanie Ellen Almeida is Miss Tourism USA. I mean, what was it like? <laughs> what, what? So, I mean, that... Uh, especially because you're not expecting it. I had gone into an audition that I didn't get the part right. only to meet someone on the panel that was like, okay, do this crazy thing you've never done before right. and you don't know what, what to expect. So right. winning that and then not only that, but having that be something that completely changed my life. You know, right. one audition that I didn't even get you never the role. Know. You never know what those you things are You never know, happen. exactly. And, and when I think you decide finally, because a lot of people, it takes a lot of time to get to a point where you're like, okay, I am going to follow my dreams and right. I'm going to go without a safety net and I'm going to go, you know, full force right um so yeah you really never know what's going to happen so i always tell people really do take that jump because you don't know what opportunity is going to bring you to the next spot it was a beauty pageant for me um so that was four years ago now and since then i've traveled to over 30 countries for free wow. living my best life you know luxury everywhere hair and makeup every morning i mean it's it's pretty tough because you're still representing a country you're waking up early mornings to get hair and makeup done and you're on photo shoots and you're doing spokesmodel oh, life and all is this. tough ah. oh, you, know, you know it's interesting to me is like i i know a lot of people who call themselves actors, but all they do is go to classes mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. don't go to auditions. Mm -hmm. They just keep on going to classes. Absolutely. You yeah. got to jump out there. You yeah. got to put yourself out mm -hmm. there. Oh, but, absolutely. And yeah. that was the thing, you know, this was something that uh, it wasn't even like a big audition, you know, something so small to me is something that was just the beginning of my journey ended right. up being the thing that changed my life. So what, what, what happened after that? What were the so, things that So, right. Happened? After I won that, yes. uh, I ended up going within the first two weeks after winning that, I ended up going to China 
for a month for oh training God. and competing. Uh, I competed in front of a stadium of 3,000 people. I sang. Uh, some of the judges were like on Top Chef and things like that in that country. So it was it was amazing. Oh. Um, and since that, I had been contracted for the next year and then the year after that. So I travel six months out of the year going to places like Bali, Turkey, Greece, producing, hosting, singing. We have some clips that you brought mm -hmm. in. Would you like to share it with our audience? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so uh, check it out. I love The Little Mermaid so much, I can't help but sing along when I see that video. <laughs> so uh, how many people were in, in the audience? Yeah, about 1,000 to 1,500. It was a beautiful double-decker theater. You know, it was a dream to be able to sing up there solo. And do, do, Like when I, I go to the theater with my wife, and uh, after the theater, you know, sometimes we go to the side and people sign. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 sign do, autographs. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, this was a part of a larger competition, so I was there competing as Miss USA, actually, and wow. I was in second place. Cool. Which I lost to Miss Brazil, which I'm Brazilian too, so I let it slide. But um, yeah, two, two's not bad. No, I mean, no, 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 I'll take give it. me a break. I'll right. take it. Sometimes right. it's fine to be. So you're the second, second most beautiful woman in the world. I'll so take it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. so um, so how many of these events did you do? Yeah, I've competed about 11 times in 11 different countries wow. with a couple different organizations. And what's been great about it is that uh, once they learn about my background, they hire me back to host. I've hosted televised events over in uh, South Korea and Cambodia and Malaysia. So how'd you get into the hosting? Um, I think I was always a natural born yeah. host. My agents mm -hmm. always told me that. Right. They're like, you were born to host. And I'm like, JT, I heard you. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I even as a young kid, I was my school's like news broadcaster and stuff. Right. So for me, it was more about always wanting to have my own TV show or my own voice to help the people. Right. I always found myself to be extremely motivational and able to kind of help and relate to others because I had I have been through a lot of my life. I've done a lot of things. I have a lot of experience. So right. I tend to to relate to a lot of people. So my my goal was always to be able to not get into acting to act to someone else, but to be my and to be a voice that helps others over everything that's happening in media right now. So with, with, with your hosting, how do you choose or do they choose you in terms of... Uh, yeah, well, you know, uh, a lot of it's word of mouth. So you're hosting one event and hopefully somebody there is seeing you. Um, a lot of my events have been that way. I, I just happen to meet the right people and be at the right place at the right time, which is half luck and half like that calculative, calculated plan of action beforehand. You right. know? Yeah, yeah. Preparation. Mm -hmm. like if you prepare it, it's luck. Is yeah, a little yeah, bit exactly. Easier. So um, we have we happen to have some clips of you hosting. Yes. Would you like to share that with yes. our audience? Yes, I'd love okay, to. Okay, so check, check this out. out. <laughs> I do have to give you guys a special token of appreciation. These young children are going to be the first ambassadors next year will officially launch and give young kids everywhere the chance to showcase their talents. How so, so what was that event? So that was um, a large talent competition that had a, a young group and also a larger group. So I was actually showcasing the kids who are going to be coming in for the next round of competition. Right. So in Asia, actually, those singing competitions like American Idol and things like that, they're really, really like huge. And they have tons of them, way more than we have here. So um, you're always seeing things about talent and bringing up the next Asian talent because I guess that's where it's at right now. Well, you know, I personally, my weaknesses are like, I'm a sore loser. I hate <laughs> not getting the part when I audition. Right, right, right. When you're when you're doing this and you go backstage and you see the kids that didn't make it, I mean, mm -hmm. are they crying? I mean, what is it like for those kids? Yeah, I mean, no, oh, that's always that's uh, all of us. You know, there's yeah. always a time where you don't get you know the right. part or what you want, of right. course. And yeah, a lot of it's hard to deal with it as a kid, and everyone deals with it differently. Right. But actually, a lot of things have happened to me, even since I was young, right. that have shown me that second place can sometimes be better than first. Right. Um, a lot of these pageants that I have been oh, in. Oh, really? Uh, second place could be better than first? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, I just heard it's that. It's all about yeah, the average. I know, you're like, what? <laughs> can it really be? Yeah. I remember um, I went to school at a very prestigious school in Florida, one of the best schools for theater and arts in the country. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was very expensive to go there. I got a full scholarship. But the only reason I ever auditioned to go to that private school was because I 
I really messed up my audition for uh, a lower kind of like community school that I was going to go to. Right. So if I had never messed that up, right. I would have never gone over there. Also, you know, most of these competitions that I do, I come in second or third place almost every time because, you know, politics is always involved. No and, question. <laughs> no question. That's the yeah, truth. Yeah, everything is politics. But um, even coming in second place or third place, right. I've gotten more opportunities than the girls that come in first simply because, you know, who you are shines out. And I think that if you are someone who's not only beautiful but is professional right. and also knows how to be a real human being. And the other <laughs> aspect, I think, I mean, it's obvious that, you know, you, you get knocked off the horse, you go back right yeah, back Yeah, exactly, again. never giving up. That's right. a New Yorker thing. You know? that's a, <laughs> right, and that's it. I mean, even though I hate not getting the part, mm -hmm. I still love to audition when exactly. I Exactly, and, and that's how you know it's your passion, when the actual process right. is enjoyable and it's not work. Right. And I think that's what a lot of people struggle with. You're, sometimes you do what you're good at over what you love, right. and you get that confused, and you're like, okay, well, I'm hating my every day, but you know, it's, it's getting me in the direction I want to go. But... Okay. So, so, so far we talked about you being a singer mm -hmm. and you being a host. Yes. What yes. else you do? So you I'm an actress. Oh, that's all. right. Yeah. You're an actress. Oh, I'm an actress. Yeah. yeah. I've actually just mm -hmm. shot this amazing pilot. It's called Pay to Play. And it's with these two brothers, Michael and Chris Barnett, who are real brothers in real life. And it's about living in this one bedroom apartment in Brooklyn. And then they uncovered this NYPD conspiracy of gentrification in their neighborhood. So oh God. it's absolutely yeah. hilarious. It's oh, co-produced. So it is a comedy, yes, right. a satire. Right. Um, and it's co-produced by Vincent DuPaul, who is a two-time Emmy-winning actor wow. and producer. I don't know who he is, but he's got a great name. He's been, he was in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, he was I'm, just in Tesla. Oh, wow. You'll, you'll recognize him when well, you see him. Well, I haven't him. seen, again, I was supposed to see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood you didn't last see week, it. and we didn't see it. My wife and I were supposed to go. Watch but, it. Homework. Okay, Where's the it. list? That's Someone it. get the list. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and um, also we have Antonio from Power. He's one of the lead roles in the show Power on Stars, and he cool. plays a hilarious cop. So I you're working it. with like really big... Time yeah, um, and so that's the be, thing too. You must be something else. I so, uh, hope. I'm, you know, I think Make we have a, a clip of. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a clip of. This, yeah, right? actually, yeah, that pilot. We should definitely check it out. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's watch her in action. <laughs> Fantastic! Wow. It's all about reclaiming our agency. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, one and time I was on the subway, and I swear to God, there was this homeless. No, 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 right? no, no, Karen. Do not interrupt Melissa. Okay. No. Deb, shut it down. But Deb, do not interrupt oh, Melissa. This is her turn to Stop share. My uh, my okay, you know what? <sighs> I'm sorry I maced you, but you should know that I'm a survivor of a really traumatic. I don't care. Okay, asshole. Actually, a victim. Oh, shut up, Steph. The only reason Deb invited you is so she'd feel more comfortable going out around here. Whoa, whoa, Karen. You're in my life. Knock it off. Have you ever heard about intersectional feminism? Huh? <laughs> no, no, that, that is great. That is yeah, fantastic. It's it all looks about, like, you know, what is it all no, about? It's all about like Brooklyn and, and everything that's going on with like the times right now and hipsters and well, everything you know, I hate so that sensitive. aspect of it because my son lives in Brooklyn and if he's doing that's any of this stuff, yeah. I'm well, going to be Well, that's why it's making fun of all of that stuff that like we're kind of going through right now mm -hmm. and I think it's the perfect satire and it's got some really amazing actors. So, right. um, and it seems, I mean, it, it could be anywhere. It could be Hollywood, but it, not really. I mean, that does, you could tell by the style that it's not, it, mm -hmm, it is Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. And then, I mean, it's it's hilarious. You're going to have to but watch Brooklyn it. Brooklyn is like uh, really the hip place to live now. It right? is. It's, it's, it's like cool. better than Manhattan when it comes to like being an artist, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Right. We had a, a, a person here who lived here for years, and he was like the best colorist for film. And he, they actually grabbed him out of Singapore. No and way. Brought him to, I mean, Plant him in Brooklyn, yeah. Right. Now he lives in Brooklyn. But he used to live in Larchmont. And um, his son and my, my, uh, my son were like best friends growing up, but he moved to like the stylish parts of Brooklyn. Wow. And, and you know, in the mm -hmm. old days, no one wanted to live in Brooklyn. Exactly, I always hear stories about, I should have bought this building, I should oh, have went. God. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. back in the day. Well, so gentrification, you, that's what it's all about. So do you love acting? I love acting, it's my number one love, and I'm actually going to be doing a film with um, director Brian Skeet, he's a really great director. It's called Wake Up to Love. It's right. all about how there's no, um, recipe for love that it's different for everyone and it comes in different shapes and sizes and that has some really big actors I can't talk about it no, yet, but good. I will share soon no, but I yeah. love Acting to me is the, If there's anything in the world I want to do at any at any time in yes. life is always act. acting. Acting is acting, like yeah. me too And it's like 
Just the, I, I mean, I like it even better than watch, you know, watching it afterwards is nice. I like doing that right, with my family. Right. It's like but playing the, the sport and watching the sport. It's right, huge. It's, I love playing the sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's the best high in the world. Exactly. Oh, I mean, yeah. Diving into a character oh, and like putting all their pieces together. And, and just, you know, like, and just not feeling, I mean, like just being that character and not feeling any environmental issues. Exactly, it's right. like, just it could be freezing outside, but you know, you don't feel it. It really cold. gets, yeah, it really you, gets you that. Know, no pain, no, no mm -hmm. nothing. It's, uh, what I love about this film, actually wake up to love is that it's a musical film so it's incorporating music oh, as well cool. which is something that i feel like as actors we haven't really seen in a long time so now you're be all singing these things in the yes film? i oh am i'll be God. singing two songs in the film oh that's so awesome that's gonna be amazing there'll be a soundtrack see. yeah it's gonna be, oh my God. hopefully some of my scenes will be taking place in italy so oh, oh that's, that's that so would great. be amazing <laughs> so um are there films that people could see you in, you know, like uh, if they want um, to Yeah, write? definitely check me out at www.missusainternational.com. All my oh. reels and everything are on oh, there. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah, great. definitely check that out. It's my travel brand. So if you guys are looking for travel tips and things like that, then also check that out. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> so um, who have you worked with other than, I mean, in the past? N um, name drop a little. I, I love it. I, I, I'm a starstruck kind well, of Well, I've worked with a lot of producers in NBC. Most of my bigger names are definitely on the background side because right. I worked, you know, with, uh, I worked in the editing room along people who have worked on movies like Avatar and Finding oh, Nemo. That's, so that, I mean, without, yeah. believe me, when I worked on Cagney and Lacey, if we didn't have good editors or whatever, I mean. Exactly. Well, the, the movie's made in the editing room. Right, that's as no we question. All know. Yeah. <laughs> and people left on the ground or not in the old days when they, yeah. they actually cut the film but yeah. <laughs> they actually <laughs> cut the film what's that <laughs> yeah but the, the, the Cagney and Lacey used to be uh, that was a show I was on that that used to be on film mm -hmm. even though it was you know a television show which mm -hmm. was pretty interesting but, oh that's amazing I see yeah. you've actually had Vincent Fester on here and I actually yeah. worked with Vinnie Vela who's a good um, friend of his he was a very I met him a few times you did he's yeah. he's a great so I, I never went to his show piece. did you yeah. ever go on I his actually co-hosted his show I was uh -huh. a guest co-host on there and that kind of got my foot in the door with hosting and me realizing that I really loved it right. all I, I want to do is talk yeah, I used to, I used to, um, you know, I'd go to the parties that JT used to have, and mm -hmm. Vinny would be there, and, uh, and uh, everybody, well, what, Joe, what's his name, the guy from uh, Goodfellas? Um, Isn't it Joe, well, I always think it's Joe Pastor, they're not no, related. No, but there's, there's a guy that played the young, um, he also played, I guess, the young uh, Pesci, Joe Pesci, maybe mm. it wasn't Joe, what, what, I'm trying to think. Oh, because his, his character name was Joe, yeah. and you're like, who's this guy, <laughs> who was Joe? <laughs> No, but anyway, I mean, all these people that JT knows, you know, they're, they're like from the Sopranos. And yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. It's all interesting. Yeah, it's been amazing. I actually worked mm -hmm. on um, The Fifth Burrow with Steve Stanulis, that whole movie. Please don't tell me because I'm so jealous. I oh! guess, and we had uh, Paul, uh, what, uh, oh God, the, one of the writers, mm -hmm. one of the original writers of it. He was a guest here. Greg Paul was his name, of mm -hmm. all things. Through, I uh, probably met him. Right. He's, and he was on the show a, a few months ago, actually. I've known him for years, but I had him on the show recently. I have to recently. watch that episode. Yeah. But that, that must have been an awesome... Uh, yeah, that was an amazing set. It, I mean, it was Jeffrey Gurian as well, which is a very good friend right. of mine. He's know, a comedian. Know um, is, yeah. You know, Jeffrey, yeah. Ikea. We, we were on that set together, actually, which was really fun. So, right. I mean, I met so many amazing people. Right. One of uh, the guy who actually sang, I got the power! Oh, he was there? Oh, that's right, 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 right. right, right. <laughs> I love you. You get me right. up in the morning. <laughs> and uh, what was it like working with Steve? Um, he's amazing. First of all, his skin just glows. Like he's a beautiful person inside and out. And just to hear his background and how he started out as a dancer and working and the, in the club and life. A bouncer and, and yeah, exactly right. A yeah. bouncer and just seeing how he's like come up in the world and, and watching him now. I'm so proud of him and I'm so happy to have worked with him. And uh, he's you're, such a good guy. I'm I'm, I'm jealous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's I'm happy that you did. I mean, because mm -hmm. you know, it's and I. I guess they made it a feature film. Yeah. Initially, it was supposed to be a, a series, yeah. but now it's a feature. It's a feature Greg film, was which I thought, that. actually, when I when I saw the whole thing, I thought it was better to go in that direction as well. Um, also, but it's nice to be on a series, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah, from yeah, 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 yeah. It's really Well, let's see. I really hope so. That would be awesome. I know he's working on other projects <laughs> right. already. Um, but some of my earlier projects, uh, when I was acting in my youth, um, I worked with actors like Camila Mendez from Riverdale. She plays oh, yeah. Veronica Lodge. Wow. Um, and also Christian Thompson, who's in the Emmy Award-winning show, Ain't Too Proud, uh, Chandler Lavelle, Pablo Torres, all these upcoming actors. Because I'm so old. I mean, I used to know, I used to know when I was really like doing it all the time, I used uh -huh. to like be on top of it. But right now, a lot of the new actors, I don't know. Well, you should definitely check them out. If you, yeah. well, you probably know Riverdale, and I don't know right. if you know Ain't Too Proud, but that is, you should listen to that soundtrack. 
So anyway, you're also, we, we, we left out another part of, of mm -hmm. uh, your background. You're into travel, right? Yes. So, uh, and soon, what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> so um, for the past couple of years that I've been doing the international spokes modeling for the U.S., I actually took it upon myself to make sure that I, I meet with government officials and things like that. Because when you have a title and you're representing a country, you kind of get to meet, you know, the mayor and wow. the president of countries and things cool, like that's that. that's awesome. It is amazing. I mean, most of my friends list on Instagram has been on like Forbes magazine. So the connections are absolutely amazing. But um, I kind of made it a point that I wanted to help and change the world. Like, no, above all, above the acting, that's, you know, the main right. prerogative. And so I got to know a lot of the government officials and the charities that we worked with so that I could go back on my own to do my own charity work. So I've been going back to real third world countries, you know, um, in Malaysia and the Philippines and things like that, going and building houses and giving back. I'd be scared now with the... the uh Funny story the about the coronavirus. coronavirus. Right. I had a big performance coming up, a solo performance in Cambodia at Naga World Hotel that actually got postponed because of the virus. So yeah. I'm like, ah, timing is everything, but and I'm my, glad I'm here. And my, my brother right now is on a cruise ship. Oh no, did he get stuck? He didn't get he's I stuck. Keep reading that he's news. stuck, but the, his cruise ship has, and it's near Singapore. It, ha, it doesn't have uh, the coronavirus on it, but they, they're not going to let anybody out. They're quarantined? They're, they're, That's my biggest fear. Well, not on well, a cruise. They're, they're not be. really quarantined, but they're not allowed to get off the ship. They're not quarantined in the All right, um, right. They're not like house arrest. And so you, they can still uh, enjoy we, the cruise for I think we trip. happen to have some a video also of, uh, of your travel experience. Yeah, Malaysia, Cambodia, so, uh, Greece, let's, let's Egypt. Let's check it out, check okay? It out, check yeah, it let's out. check this out. Oh, my God. So you're living like, like this wonderland, uh, this wonderful uh, yeah. dream life almost, right? I mean, yeah, I made a decision to do it, and right. as soon as I made that vision board and I was looking at my goals every day, it's like it became so Checking attainable. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what I, I really feel like. If you put an emotional connection to your goals and you right. look at them every day, they kind of come to you. Like even if you don't notice, like all those little steps you're taking in the day when you're thinking about those goals, right. they get you there and you don't even notice sometimes. Maybe in 20 years you could teach other people how to do it. Maybe yes. that's something you could Yes, do. that's the goal, you know? Like right. I wanna make sure that I, I know what I'm doing first and that it's right. not just all luck and like, you know, but it's not. I put a lot of hard work, a lot of concentration and right. I, I think the biggest thing as an actor too, but as a person as well, regular right. person, right. Um, you gotta always ask yourself, how am I feeling and what do I want? Because the second you're not doing what your heart desires, you're never going to be on the right path and you're never going to be happy. But, I mean, I've only met you today, mm -hmm. but you seem to be very well grounded and, you know, you're a very attractive person. You're, you're a very talented person. <laughs> I met a lot of people in Hollywood that were attractive and talented who were not, the, not well right, grounded. Right, you know, right. I mean, so so it, it, it's... Um, that must help also, that mm -hmm. you're a regular human being yeah. as well. I thank my mom and my dad, you know, right. like I have such an amazing support group, a big family. I've been with my boyfriend for many years and awesome. he is, he believes in my dreams more than his own and I'm so thankful for that. Right. Um, I have a great group behind me, so. So, okay, so I gotta ask the question because uh, <laughs> like I, it, it, it's awkward for me, even at my age, I sometimes get scenes in, in movies where I have to kiss. Oh yeah, that's my something. life. So the, how does, I mean, how, does your boyfriend have any issues with that? This ever? is so funny. I, I can't believe no, I'm well, asking this question. It's, it's funny that you asked that question because I'm sure nobody has had this experience. My very first, um, it was a sex scene. It was implied, right. obviously. Right. Um, but my belief. boyfriend was in the actual studio and he was oh just like God. the room next door. Oh, so no. he, he went through the whole thing and I felt so bad, but he wanted to be there and... And he knew I was doing a sex scene. I was like, I better you be there. Then you ask me questions about what happened later. Right. Um, you know, I like to be an open book of honesty when it comes to that. So he was there in the room right next to me while I was having my first insinuated sex scene right. on screen. So well, I was in this movie called The Osterman Weekend that had, um, it was it was a Sam Peckinpah's last movie. He was like this unbelievable director. But I, we were having lunch. And again, I was just an extra on that set. Mm -hmm. And it was back in like 1982 or three. The good days. And during lunch, we decided to go on the set, watch John Hurt do um, his acting, but we didn't know it was gonna be a scene where he was actually with his wife 
in, in his bed. His real wife? No, his wife Acting in bed. Wife. Okay. <laughs> he gets up after they were together. He goes to the restroom and these these people come like these people come from the ceiling down and they kill the wife. They stick a needle up her nose. That's amazing. Her mouth. So anyway, but they were both like naked and we're just yeah, like we're on, the, <laughs> we're on the set eating our lunch, watching this thing. It's so weird. That's that's the yeah. other weird thing about it is that a lot of times even, you know, in other sets where they had these kind of weird kind of movies that I was in with uh, you know, there was something called My Tutor where it was I mean, famous actors, famous directors, but they had like scenes where it was supposed to be a close set and everybody's there. Everybody's I mean, there. Well, almost, they always say it's close set. Like, and then, it's almost yeah. like the selling tickets. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, well, that's, yeah. a, that's honestly, I think a lot of female actresses have to deal with this. Like right. they're, I mean, sometimes directors are looking to put you into an explicit scene just right. because people will watch it. And right. I feel like ugh, we need to like move away from right. that. I think we are though. I think that's yeah. the direction that, and it's a good direction. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, it's, Old Hollywood, or not even that old, it's just you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, yeah. 30 years ago, it's, uh, there was a lot of exploitation that was mm -hmm. happening. And mm -hmm. look where it's got us, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, exactly. Look, look at the, look at the what world I'm saying. today. Look it's... at the world today. And that's, <laughs> that's like my main reason why, no matter what I'm doing, spokes modeling, hosting, right. acting, like it's all to promote a positive message. And hopefully I'll have my own TV show where I can bring people on and well, change I can't their see lives. why not. You know, that's the whole thing. Let's make it happen. No, it'll happen. Right. Put it on your dream board. Yeah, you know, put like, it on my vision board. Vision it's on my board, vision board it's... actually already. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> it's probably going to happen. I mean, how could it not happen? Yeah, how could it not? Thank you. How could it not happen? That's the kind of thinking we need in our little circle of positivity. No, but that's and that's the way it should be. I mean, you know, you can make it happen, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even in my little world here, I, I made this happen, and it's, it gives me an opportunity to have a platform for for other artists to yep. just come and talk about themselves. Absolutely. And my pilot will actually be coming out. Uh, I'm sh there's a pilot we shot. It's in the making right now, pre-edit right. of all of my traveling and everything I've been doing around the world. So right. you can find that at www.missusainternational.com and on Instagram at Miss USA International. Is there any other uh, stuff you want to throw out there? Throwing? No, I mean, that's all. <laughs> everything is out. And right. it was so amazing. Like, it was so amazing being here and being able to talk about all this. Oh, it's fun. You. And it was fun to have you on the show. And, and JT always... Yeah, every time it's a better and better guest. Got the hook up, That's JT. It. <laughs> so um, I can't wait. So what what was the uh, website again? www.missusainternational.com. Oh, that's great. So uh, <laughs> maybe one day we'll work together. Absolutely. Right? That would be fun. Looking forward to that day. Okay, Alan. that's it. <laughs> so uh, there's only like one thing left to say. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks.